Is love. Try, try, try to separate them. It's an illusion. Try, 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 and you will only come to this conclusion love and marriage. For many years, I've been skeptical about marriage. I've heard many of the same sentiments from many people on YouTube, many of whom are so disgusted about what they've seen of it, they openly and forcefully preach anti-marriage. I have seen many new marriages fail and few last. The few that I have seen last have a few key ingredients about them. The current concept of marriage is a new phenomena, only appearing in the past 70 years with the event of romance movies and books. Most marriages until this last century were made for political reasons. By political, I do not mean they were always royal weddings, though that was quite common, as in the Middle Ages, there were only really three ways to change politics, and that was start a war, change your religion, or get married to someone powerful. However, there was a politics among the commoners as well, and that is the social politics of community cohesion. There was also the fact that in many parts of the world, women could not hold property or were themselves considered property. So they had to choose a man that would care for them, and most marriages were not really about love. Giving in to your emotions or passions were looked down on, especially if it interfered with the community fluidity. Since the community was required for survival, that was the most important thing in the world. When the luxury of individuality and self-reliance, especially in the event of much time-saving scientific advancements, suddenly the middle class had leisure time. Suddenly, marriage for the sake of others began to fade, and marrying for your own sake became the most important thing. With the rise of the women's rights movement, literacy, and especially cinema, giving in to your emotions and passions became more and more idealized. And since these viewers now had the luxury to indulge in this once shun and addictive drug, they ate it up in a flash. As I said prior, pair bonding is a very real emotion produced by AVP or oxytocin which is what kept a lot of the early marriages together. That and a realistic view of marriage as mostly a creation of convenience and not of expecting too much like fireworks all the time. Infatuation was more often than not frowned upon. In fact, Romeo and Juliet was a play showing the danger and stupidity that could ensue when one thought with infatuation and not with a more pragmatic view. I was listening to someone on NPR, and it got me thinking about this subject. The speaker was Elizabeth Gilbert, author of Eat, Pray, Love, who had a new book out called Committed. She said that the modern marriage is a thing of luxury. However, many high and unrealistic expectations are placed on it. Our ancestors would have thought we were crazy for what we expect marriage to be. One of the things she noted was the mental linkage between a wedding and marriage that many women have. Many fail to note that they are hardly the same thing. Found out that many women did not actually want to get married, but they badly craved a wedding. The idea of chosen and being paraded around like a prized princess is overwhelming for many women, especially ones who feel like they are of very little worth. Disney has a lot to say for this. The marriage is the thing that happens after that, and it had better work, or it will negate the entire wedding. Many of them are blinded by infatuation and think there is no way that their marriage could ever go bad with this overwhelming love they have for each other, or at least these emotions that I feel for you that you must have the same if you're marrying me after I pushed you enough, right? One of the things I was so skeptical about marriage was the statistics of a 50% failure rate in marriages. I did not ever want to be that statistic. So I wasn't sure if I could ever find someone that I thought I could last with, especially with the social issues I have. Many people fear these statistics and think all marriage is bad because of them. 
However, Elizabeth Gilbert addressed this problem. She said that the statistics actually say that while marriage failure rates are at a 50% overall, divorce rates for young couples, especially those fresh out of high school, are 80%. This ridiculously skews the statistics, especially since most marriages are started at that age. According to sociologists, thanks to a combination of increased schooling being expected, increased leisure time, and increasingly complicated world we live in, people do not actually reach adulthood until about 26. Prior to this boom in technology, information, and education, the path was set. You grew up, you got married immediately and started having kids, worked hard at the same job until you died. Now we have options to try all sorts of different careers, ideas, and even religions. 18 to 26 has now become a very important stage of self-exploration and self-understanding. Your career, education, religion, and political views are no longer chosen for you or set in stone. You many times are a completely different person at 26 from who you were at 18. 18 is when you have to learn how to deal with life without any authority from your parents. If two people get married at the age of 18, many times by the age of 26, they will end up waking up and finding themselves married to someone completely different than who they had their wedding with. I think it would be a great idea, perhaps, to have a learner's permit for young newlyweds with the required prenuptial agreement until the age of 26 or so, but that would never happen because divorce lawyers get most of their business from this age bracket. One major problem with marriage is that so many people are looking for someone to complete them. Like marriage must be the silver bullet cure all for all of your unhappiness. If you're unhappy single, trust me, you will be unhappy married once the flames of passion wear off. You do not need to find someone to complete you. What you need is to complete yourself then find another complete person to join you on your path in life. If you expect someone else to complete you, I'm sorry they will fail miserably. Postponing marriage is the best policy. Rushing into marriage is a horrible idea. The older you wait to get married, the larger your chances are to have it last. Wait until you're 26 or 30 for when you know yourself better. You will know who will keep you interested, and you will know to look for traits that are dangerous to your happiness, or will turn out to be extremely irritating in the future. If it's too late for this, you may want to get counseling, even if you're doing well. Issues you may have not encountered yet may occur once you hit a different phase of your life that you weren't prepared for, and you may be shocked at how your partner reacts. Preparedness and a good sense of reality is always best. Make sure the person you are with is going the same direction you are in the way of finances, beliefs, politics, and child raising. Not all of these are equally important, but make sure you have discussed and talked about this and have come to an agreement, or at least an agreement to disagree, and it's not a problem. If not, you might be shocked once these issues come up. When one is realistic about marriage, it can work, especially if one is self-aware and complete.